How many good watches come to mind when you think of a $60 watch? To put things in perspective, $60 is what I might pay for a nice dinner outside with my wife. How much watch can you actually get for the price of a dinner date? Well, based on this artist dive AD 2030, more than you think. Besides the white dial I have, this AD2030 also comes with a nice light brown dial and a light blue dial as well. I went with the white version because it gave me Grand Seiko Snowflake vibes and that's a watch I absolutely love. Scratching a Grand Seiko itch for $60 might sound ridiculous, but unless I win the lottery, this will have to do. The classic proportions on the case make it a great fit for a majority of wrist sizes out there. Yes, it may look a bit small if your wrist is above 7.5 inches, but hear me out. A small watch never looks as bad as an oversized watch. The familiar case shape is executed very well on this timepiece. The top of the lugs have a consistent circular brushing, and there's a nice sharp transition between that and the polished sides. The finishing here is much better than I'd expect at this price point. The side profile is very slim because of their movement choice, and the beautiful curve at the lugs makes it sit comfortably on the wrist. The screw down crown is signed with the Adi's Dive logo. The treading feels very smooth, but the small crown felt a bit difficult for me to manipulate. On the plus side, you're only going to need to set the time on this watch once, so this is not something you're going to be annoyed with on a regular basis. The top hat crystal is made from mineral, and with my track record of scratching mineral crystals, I really wish they used the sapphire instead. I really wouldn't mind paying a bit more for that just to get some peace of mind. Scratch resistance aside, this mineral crystal is quite impressive. The top hat is a beautiful look and it's probably one of the clearest mineral crystals I've seen. There's a blue AR coating on the underside that I'm not usually a fan of, but the blue hue on this isn't very visible in most angles. You'll just see a pop of blue on the edges in certain lighting. And honestly, I really like the way that looks against the dial. Speaking of the dial, the dial on this AD2030 is the absolute star of the show. It's a silvery white dial with just a bit of sheen on the finish. You can see how the color compares to the stark white dial on my Seiko Speed Timer. The beautiful dial texture reminds me of the gentle shapes of the seabed. Textured dowels at this price point usually have a tendency to look cheap, but Adizive went with a texture that's quite subtle and it makes this dowel look far more expensive than it really is. It's not just the dowel though, that same perceived quality can be seen on the indices and the handset. The applied indices are chunky and finish really well, and the bevel dolphin handset is equally as good. The part that really caught me off guard is the minute markings. They're actually raised, and this is not something I've seen on many watches at this price point. All these elements combined just give the dial a ton of dimensionality. Just look at how it compares to my Seiko Sub 033, which would set you back about 10 times more if you want to purchase a new old stock in today's market. Don't get me wrong, I love my Saab, but with the artist dive beside it, the dial elements on the Saab just look a bit flat and uninspiring. It kind of boggles my mind how Adi's Dive managed to pull this off at this price point. While we're on the dial, let's address the elephant in the room. And that's the branding. I'm really not a fan of the Adi's Dive logo. I think it's okay on their dive watches, but it looks out of place on a piece that's quite classy like this one. This might be entirely subjective though. What do you think of the logo? Let me know in the comments. That Deep Sea Hunter text is also out of place on this watch because, I mean, no one is going to go dive with a dressy piece. But that text is so small and unreadable anyway, so it's not really a big deal for me. If Adi's Dive comes up with a clean logo for their dressy timepieces, these would fly off the shelf even more than they already are. The movement powering this watch is the Seiko VH31 Mega Quartz movement which is how they've managed to keep the price down compared to having a mechanical movement. 
This is my first experience with the VH31 and I actually really like this movement. The second hand has a sweeping motion that takes at 4 times per second. So it gives you the convenience of a quartz movement and also the sweeping second hand of a mechanical movement. As a bonus, you won't be annoyed by the second hand not hitting each minute marker. The VH31 is an actual no date movement, so there's no ghost date position as well, which is something that's always appreciated. This movement has been a nice change of pace compared to the other mechanical watches I have in my collection. I know that I can just pick this up and go if I'm in a hurry. I don't need to wind it up or set the time and date like I usually do with my other mechanical watches. I mean, if I'm being honest, I don't really set the date most of the time anyway, so I'm always looking at the wrong date. The bracelet feels lightweight, but I don't really mind that for the price and style of this watch. The lightweight and rounded edges actually make it feel very comfortable on your wrist. This feels slightly better than the bracelets I've had on classic Seiko 5 models, like the SNXS73 and the SNKL41. Compared to those watches, this bracelet has solid links, solid end links, and even a milk clasp. I also love that they've included 5 adjustment positions on the clasp, so you're not going to have an issue getting the perfect fit for your wrist. I kind of have mixed feelings about the 19mm lug width. It looks very proportionate to the case, so that's actually a great design choice. But it's not the most practical size if you're going to change straps often. The odd measurement is going to limit the number of straps you can use with this watch. The center links that connected to the end links were a bit sticky on my unit. This could just be a QC issue, but this is exactly the kind of situation that odd lug width is highlighted even more. Most of the straps I have are either 18mm or 20mm, so I couldn't swap out the bracelet for a strap I had. Yes, I know, I could have used a smaller 18mm strap, but I don't like seeing empty spaces on either side of the strap. That's just not a cool look for me. Sorry, Bond. So, to sum up, what do I think of the Addis Dive AD2030? Honestly, this watch completely blew away all my expectations. It has no reason being as good as it is for $60, and it looks way more expensive than its price point. The overall styling and execution is incredible. It's extremely comfortable, and the convenience of the Mecha Quartz movement just makes this the perfect watch for grab and go. I feel like this is one of those watches that both enthusiasts and newcomers would love having in the collection. Sure, there are some things that can be improved, but this is a $60 watch. And on the whole, there are so many things they pulled off here that are far above what's expected at this price point, and I can actually overlook some of its shortcomings. Except that logo. Please change that logo.